In this video, I will explain how to calculate consumer and producer surplus before and after a tax has been implemented. So let's jump into an example. This says, suppose the market demand and supply for a specific type of chair is given by the following equations. The market demand is P, the market price, is equal to 125 minus 0.375Q, the market quantity. And the market supply is given by P is equal to 5 plus 0.125 times Q. Consider the scenario where the government imposes a $20 tax on each chair. Find the consumer and producer surplus before and after the tax, then find the tax revenue the government will receive, the deadweight loss, and the consumer and producer tax burdens. Okay, so before we start solving this problem, it will help if we actually graph the market demand function and the market supply function, because that will help us visualize this situation. So let's start with the market demand function. The easiest way to graph this line is to start by plugging in a zero for Q. So I've created a graph down here where the y-axis is the price and the x-axis is the quantity. If we plug in a zero for the quantity right here, so if we're right here on this axis, if we plug in a zero for Q, we end up with P is equal to 125. So the demand curve will intersect this y-axis right here at 125. Then we can also find where does it intersect the x-axis right here. So to find this point, we just have to plug in a zero for P, because notice that's the point on the graph where P is equal to zero right here, and we can figure out what Q is. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we plug in a zero for P, we get zero is equal to 125 minus 0.375Q, we can add a 0.375q to each side, so we get 0.375q is equal to 125. And then if we divide both sides by 0.375, we can solve for q. So when we do that, these cancel out and we're left with q is equal to 125 divided by 0.375. That turns out to be 333.3 repeating. So that's our value right here on this x-axis. So let's label that 333. 0.3 repeating. And we can just draw a line to connect these two points. So this is our demand line. Let's go ahead and label that with a D. Next, we can do the same process to graph our market supply. So if we plug in a zero for Q, we see that P is equal to five. So let's say that's right about here. P is equal to five. And we'll notice that if we consider the equation Y equals MX plus B, the slope of this equation is 0.125 Q. So that's a positive slope. So this market supply is just going to be positive upward sloping, something like this. So let's label that as our supply curve. Now let's first find what is our consumer surplus and producer surplus before the tax is implemented. So to figure that out, the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out what is this point right here. So this represents our market equilibrium quantity and price. So the way that we can find this point is by setting these two equations equal to each other and solving for Q. So that will tell us our equilibrium quantity for the market. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we'll set the market demand equal to the market supply. So we would get 125 minus 0.375Q is equal to 5 plus 0.125Q. Okay, so if we subtract a 5 and if we add a 0.375Q to both sides, we get 120 is equal to 0.375 plus 0.125, that's just 0.5Q. So to solve for Q, we'll divide both sides by 0.5. And when we do that, these 0.5s cancel out, and Q, our market quantity equilibrium, is going to be equal to 120 divided by 0.5, that is 240. So that tells us that this quantity right here, where the supply curve intersects the demand curve, this is 240, that's what the quantity is. And to figure out the price, we can then plug in 240 into either one of these equations, and we'll get the same answer. So let's plug it into the market supply equation, and that will tell us our market equilibrium price. So we'll get P is equal to 5 plus 0 0.125. We're plugging in 240 here. So we end up with P is equal to 5 plus 0.125 times 240. That turns out to be 30. So we get 5 plus 30, which is 35. So our equilibrium price, let's label that right here, that's going to be 35, so $35. So that's our equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. Now that we figured out those two values, we have everything we need to calculate the consumer surplus and the producer surplus before the tax is implemented. So the consumer surplus, that's going to be the area of this triangle right here. 
So it's the area below the demand curve, but above the market equilibrium price, all the way up to the market equilibrium quantity. And this area represents the sum of all of the transactions where the consumers would have actually paid more than $35 for a chair, but they got the benefit of only paying $35. So they only had to pay $35. And it's the sum of all of those transactions all the way up to a quantity of $240. So the way that we find the area of this triangle, let's label that as consumer surplus, that's going to be equal to one half times the base times the height. So one half times the base of this triangle that's right here. So we can see that this length would be from 0 to 240, which is just 240. So let's write 240. And then multiplied by the height, so let's say the height is this side of the triangle right here. So that's the difference between 125 minus 35, that's 90. So this is a height of 90. So let's say times 90. And when you punch this into a calculator, 1 half times 240 times 90, that turns out to be 10,800. So the consumer surplus before the tax is 10,800. Now the producer surplus is going to be the area of this triangle right here. So it's the area above the supply curve, but below the market equilibrium price all the way up to the market equilibrium quantity. And this represents the sum of all of the transactions where the suppliers actually would have sold the chair for less than 35, but they get the benefit of selling it at this market equilibrium price of 35 all the way up to a quantity of 240. So the way that we find the area of this triangle is, let's say the producer surplus is equal to one half times, again, the base times the height. So the base, let's say, is this distance right here. So from zero to 240, that's 240. And then the height of this triangle, we can see that that's the difference between 35 and five, which is 30. So that has a height of 30. And when you punch this into a calculator, you get, $3,600. So here's our producer surplus and our consumer surplus before the tax has been implemented. Now let's go ahead and find these same values after the tax has been implemented. Okay, so I'm going to clear a little bit of space here. Okay, so I've rewritten what our producer surplus and consumer surplus was before the tax. Now let's consider the scenario where the government imposes a $20 tax on each chair. So in this case, when the government imposes this $20 tax, it's directly going to affect the market supply equation. And what's going to happen is it's going to be the exact same market supply, but the price is going to be increased by 20. So all we're going to do is just add 20 to this equation. So we can see that the new market supply is going to be P is equal to this equation plus 20. That would just be 5 plus 20, which is 25 plus 0.125Q, the quantity sold. So this is the new market supply equation after the tax. Now, what we can do is go ahead and graph this line. So to graph this, we can see that if we plugged in a zero for the quantity, P would be equal to 25. So our new market supply, it's going to cross this y-axis at 25. And what we'll see is that the new market supply line is going to be exactly parallel to the old line, but it's going to be pushed up by the exact amount of the tax, which in this case is 20. So at every point on the line, it increases by 20. And let's go ahead and label this as the supply plus tax. So the supply equation plus the tax implemented. So now to find the new consumer and producer surplus, we're going to find this point right here, which is our new market equilibrium price and quantity. So to find this point, we're going to set this new equation, this new market supply equation equal to the old demand equation and solve for Q. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to say 25 plus 0.125Q, and we're setting that equal to the market demand equation. So 125 minus 0.375Q. So if we get the Qs on the same side, we can add this 0.375Q to this side, we'll get 0.5Q is equal to, let's subtract a 25 from each side, we'll get 100. And then dividing both sides by 0.5, we'll find that Q, our new Q star, let's call that quantity equilibrium tax. So this is the equilibrium quantity after the tax has been implemented. 100 divided by 0.5 is 200. So this point right here, this new market equilibrium quantity after the tax is 200. So we can see that the quantity has gone down after the tax has been implemented. And the new market equilibrium price, let's see what that's going to be. So to find that, we can just plug in 200 into this equation right here. So we'll find that 
P star, let's call it P star tax, our new market equilibrium price after the tax is 25 plus 0.125 times 200. So this turns out to be 25 plus 0.125 times 200 is 25. So 25 plus 25 is 50. So our new market equilibrium price is 50. All right, so now that we've identified the new equilibrium price and quantity, let's start by finding what is the tax revenue that the government will receive. So the tax revenue graphically is going to be this rectangle right here. This is going to be the government tax revenue. And what it represents is we saw that our new market equilibrium is 200. So there will be 200 chairs sold. And on each of those chairs, the government is going to receive $20 in tax revenue. So if we just wanted to do that in our head, the total tax revenue is going to be 200 times 20, which is 4,000. Or graphically, we could try to find the area of this rectangle. So notice that we're only missing one piece of the puzzle to figure out this rectangle area, and that's this point right here, which is where the quantity of 200 intersects the original supply curve. So the original supply curve right here, if we plug in a 200 for Q, that would be 200 times 0.125, that's 25, and 25 plus 5 is 30. So this point right here corresponds to a price of 30. So if we wanted to find the area of this rectangle, that would just be the base, which is from 0 to 200, which is 200, times the height, which is the difference between 50 and 30, which is 20. So either way you want to do that, you can say the tax is going to be equal to $20 times $200, which comes out to $4,000. So the tax revenue for the government is going to be $4,000. Now, once we've found that, we can also find what's the new consumer and producer surplus. So the new consumer surplus, that's going to be the area of this triangle right here. So once again, to find the area of this triangle, that's one half times base times height. So I'm going to clear a little bit of space here. So to find the area of this triangle, let's go ahead and label that as consumer surplus sub tax. So after the tax has been implemented. That's going to be equal to one half times the base of this triangle. So the base, that's the distance between zero and 200, which is just 200, times the height of this triangle. That's the difference between 125 and 50, which is 75. So we'll say times 75. And when you punch that into a calculator, you get 7,500. So that is the consumer surplus after the tax has been implemented. And the producer surplus is going to be the area of this triangle right here. So this new triangle. So let's go ahead and write the producer surplus after the tax. That's going to be equal to the area of one half times the base of this triangle is also 200 times the height. So the height of this triangle is the difference between 30 and 5, which is 25. So let's say 25. And when you punch that into a calculator, you get... 2,500. So this is the producer surplus after the tax has been implemented. All right, next we can calculate the dead weight loss. So on the graph, the dead weight loss is going to be this green triangle right here. And this represents the sum of all of the transactions that would have occurred, but they no longer occur because the tax has been imposed. So to find the area of this triangle, once again, we're going to take, let's say, dead weight loss, DWL is equal to one half times the base times the height. So the base of this triangle, that's just the difference between 240 and 200, which is 40. And the height of this triangle is going to be the difference between 50 on the upper end and 30 on the lower end. So 50 minus 30, that's 20. So we'll have times 20. And that comes out to $400. So that's our dead weight loss. Now we're also asked to find the consumer and producer tax burdens. So we saw that the total tax revenue that the government will receive is $4,000, which we saw was the area of this rectangle right here. Now we can split this into a consumer and a producer tax burden. So let's say consumer tax burden, let's start with that. That's going to be equal to, for all 200 of these chairs sold, it's going to be the difference between what the consumer has to pay and what they want to pay when there is no tax. So what they have to pay is $50. We saw that's the new equilibrium price after the tax. But what they wanted to pay before the tax was implemented was $35. So the difference between those two will say 50 minus 35, and then we multiply that by the total transactions of 200. So 50 minus 35 is 15, 
15 times 200, that turns out to be $3,000. This is the consumer tax burden. And visually, it is this portion of the rectangle. So this portion of the government revenue. And the remaining portion of this rectangle, so this tiny little sliver right here, this is the producer tax burden. So to calculate that, we'll say P tax burden. That's going to be the difference between the market equilibrium price before the tax and what the producer actually receives after the tax. So remember the market equilibrium price is 50, but $20 of that has to go to the government. So the producer is now only receiving 30. So the difference between 35 and 30. So we'll say 35 minus 30, and that's for all 200 transactions that will occur. So 35 minus 30 is 5. 5 times 200 is $1,000. So the producer tax burden is $1,000. And you can double check that you got the right answer for the consumer and producer tax burden because they should add up to the total tax revenue from the government. And we can see that they do add up. 3,000 plus 1,000 is 4,000. So those are the basics of how to find consumer and producer surplus before and after a tax.